Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at this model that's been sent in from Patreon who's having a problem with booling these together. So we have a motor mount and a motor. So this is a makeshift motor to create an indent for the actual motor within this. It's done in a part design so you can see the linear workflow. And what we need to do is first make the main body active. So this is our main body and this is our tool body. So this one here, this tool body. We make sure nothing's selected and we use the Boolean operation, add body. We add this body. As you can see, it's taken. So the fuse is taken, but when we go for the cut, you can see we've got some problems. We've just been left with a face. So what we're going to do is look at the model and I'm going to show you how I problem solve models like this and show you some techniques that I use to figure out where the model breaks. So I hope you enjoy this channel and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So we're at the stage of where our booing has failed. I'm just gonna hit okay. And you see we have the booing on the left hand side here. I'm gonna draw this down a bit so we can see what's happened. So we've got the body. This is the main active body and the boolean inside. Now the first thing I will do is come over to the part workbench. We have tools in the part workbench to check geometry. And to do that, we select the body that we want to check, come up to part, and come down to check geometry. So this is for any workbench. It's not just for the parts, for the part design, draft, etc. On the left hand side, we have a number of settings that we can run checks on. So we've got the run BOP checks, and individual BOP checks here, and they're all ticked. So I'm going to make sure that this one's checked and all of these are checked and hit run check. This will check through the geometry and tell us what's happening. So you can see that check geometry results has come up and let's pull this over to the right hand side and it's coming up solid and valid and it's telling us what's happening here. So we've got a self intersect. Now self intersect happens in all CAD packages. It happens in all 3D packages as well. It's not just FreeCAD, it's not a problem with FreeCAD. And I can give you a demonstration of what a self intersection is. If we close this and start a new document and come over to the SketchUp. And I'm going to create something in here. So I'm gonna create a new sketch along the XY plane. And we're going to use the B spline. Now we'll show two demonstrations of this. The easiest one is to do say a figure of eight with a single B spline, like so. And this will create a self intersection. So here it actually intersects with itself. So if I close this and come over to the part, select that sketch and extrude along the normal, you can see well, straight away we've got a problem. And if I run the checks on here on this strewed part check geometry and run those checks, you can see we've got the self intersection wire here. So another example of self intersection is through a loft. I'm going to use the part design for this. Let's use the part design and we'll create a sketch. X, Y plane, okay. And we'll create a circle. So the first one is the outer and the second one is the inner. So I did the outer and then the inner. Let's close that. See, we've got that in the body. So let's create a new sketch, X, Y plane and okay. And this time I'm going to reverse them. So I'm going to do an inner and then an outer. So I've reversed my process here. I did the inner and then the outer first, rather than the outer, then the inner. So I've got those two there. Let's 
add some distance. So let's come in and look at the attachment and set the distance using the position along the Z of say 30. So we've got those two there. If I create a loft between these by using one of the sketches, additive loft, add section, and we're gonna add this section. See how these cross over. That's because I created the first sketch with outside inside, and then the second sketch with inside outside. And at first thoughts, this may look like it's an error of FreeCAD, but it's not. We've got to determine which profile FreeCAD is gonna be using for the inner and the outer. As humans, we can figure that out ourselves, but the only way we can do that is by telling FreeCAD by drawing the outer first and then drawing the inner, and then the next sketch, we follow the same suit. Draw the outer and then the inner. If I OK this and click on that body and come over to the part workbench and use the part check geometry and run check on that, you can see we've got self intersection again. So this is what a self intersection is. Let's close this and also close our document as well. We don't need this anymore. So let's close without saving. So this is creating a self intersection and it's failing the boolean. So what do we do? Well, something's causing that failure. And we've got the body here and inside we've got the boolean. And we got our last action here, which is the fillet. Notice the tip. So this green part here is the last action. That's the tip. Inside booleans for the part design, you'll see a tip here as well. So the last action was fillet. One of these actions must be causing the model to fail. The good thing about the part design is that we can go to this next fillet and change that to the tip. So right click and we should be able to set the tip, but we need to be in the part design workbench to do this because our options will change. So the next action here, right click, set tip. Notice our action is now got a green arrow by the side of it. Well, a green circle with a white arrow. That is the tip. If you look to the right, as we move up, to this pad and set tip. We will see this face here change. See how it changed? And that means it's taking the boolean with this pad. As we move up, I can see that we've got problems carrying on from pad five upwards. So we know it's below pad five going this way. Set tip on this one, and this one's taken. So we've got a problem with pad five. So this one here, and we can see that this sketch, if I double click it, we can see that sits on that face there and it removes, well, it's supposed to remove the material going this way, the pad going this way. So we've identified the problem and it's a self intersection. Let's close this. And it's a bit hard to see without deleting this boolean to release the boolean from here. Let's delete this boolean actually so we can see what's going on. So what I've done is delete that boolean. This part of the object is fine. So let's have a look at body 001. But if I set the tip to this one this will fail. Because it's a cut, it's going to be failing below this edge here. So this will create an edge. So something suspect is happening below from this point downwards. Now what I'm going to do is hide our main body and start looking at the edges. We know that half of this model going this way is inset into the body. So we start to look from where it starts to be intersected into the body. So we've got this edge here and straight away I can see 
Now, if we look at these edges, we've got a straight edge here, and this edge is divided at this point. And I'm wondering, let's bring back the other body. We can see that if we highlight that edge, where that meets this body, it seems to be right on that border there. Let's take a closer look by clicking on our main body, come into the view, and have a look at the transparency. Let's set this transparency up high so we can see inside, so 80. Now we can see inside there, let's see in here and click on that edge. We can see where it intersects just about. And that is right on that edge there. So let's try something. Let's make sure nothing's selected. And actually, let's take this body and reset this transparency back to zero. Make sure nothing's selected and use the Boolean. The active body should disappear and the tool body should be left behind. Click add body and click the tool body and use the cut. So this fails. You can see that file in there. Let's hit OK. What I'm going to do now is take this body inside the Boolean. So this one here, this is our tool body that we used. And I'm going to come into the data and I'm going to change its placement. So the position. And we're going to nudge one of these axes. So let's nudge the Y. I don't think this is the right one. Which way is this going? So this will be the X this way. So let's not nudge the Y. Let's nudge the X by one millimeter. And when I clicked off, you can see that's taken. So it is that edge there that runs along here that's causing the issue. Let's try 0.5. Still no problems. 0.1. Still no problems. 0.1. And it's fine. The minute it goes to zero, then it disappears. So it's definitely that edge. So the operation is making an intersection for some reason. The suspect to me is that, let's just delete that boolean. So we get this back. The suspect for me is where we have these two edges here and here and they intersect our main body that runs this way. So our main body, if I look at that pocket, it runs this way. We can fix this as shown before by just nudging that slightly by 0.01 of millimeter. Or we could go in and edit that sketch. So let's have a look at the pad 05 sketch, which is this one. We can see it's got 11.98 millimeters. I set this to something like 12 millimeters and set 9.98 to 10 millimeters. And hit close. So now what we've got, if we come down here and hide this body, we should have one edge that goes along here. So we've got one edge now. We've got some problems, we've got failures, so the sketch has failed, and this is because we've created more faces and we've changed the underlying geometry. And basically what's happened is that what it's connected to is no longer there. A lot of people will be saying topological naming issues. If we reference a face and a sketch is upon that face and the face is no longer there, it will no longer be attached to that face because it's, it's not there. So this happens in all CAD packages. Some of them deal with it in a different way, but they will still show it as an error, but they'll allow you to carry on. FreeCAD is not as forgiving, but what we can do is fix this and fix it quite easily. So I'm going to fix that now. I'm going to take that sketch and what we're going to do is we'll bring this down so we can see it and let's have a look, see what we got. So we got support is pad 15, flat face. And what we'll do is just come in here. You can see that the attach engine 3D subshape not found. So that base 15 is no longer there. And what I'm going to do is just delete it and hit OK. There's a tick by the side of it. Edit, refresh, control R. 
whichever shortcuts for your OS, and that's now fixed. Personally, I would reattach it to that face, but here's a quick way of fixing that problem. It's still placed at position, but if anything changes underneath, then it's no longer attached. Next one, sketch 013, I'm just gonna do the same. So map mode, flat face. You can see subshape no longer is existing. So we take that away and hit okay. And if we're moving up the tree. Let's refresh. Of course, the fillet's gonna fail. This fillet here. So we double click that and we look for the edges. So we've got edge 28, 29, and I can't see these. Let's have a look. So we have got a bit of a problem here. It's all saying that it's around this edge here. So we need to remove these. We can either remove it and try to find them in our model or an easier way. Let's cancel that. This fillet, come in, look at the base come into the base and we'll clear out the base. I'm just gonna select pad seven and hit okay. This means I can come into this fillet and start adding the edges. So add edge and we'll add all the edges that we need. Going around. And hit okay. So that's resolved now. And we've got the final fillet, this one here, let's press the space bar to show that, and we're all good to go. So by rights now, we should be fine. So when we create our boolean between these two, and let's just show this pocket, you can see the pocket is invisible because I clicked on it, press the space bar and it disappeared. Make sure nothing's selected, make sure we've got the active body and our tool body is body 001, and we'll create the boolean. Add body, add our motor, and use a cut. Now you can see we've got this cut into here, and this is because we haven't set the tip yet. So the tip is still at pad 005. Let's go to the fillet, right click, set tip. And we're all fixed and ready to go. There's a quick insight of how I take a model and problem solve it when we're using a part design workflow. So I hope that's giving you a bit of knowledge. One thing to take away from this is this change in the tip. Very handy for problem solving your models. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash darren b e stone i also run a patreon where you can get early access and additional content and that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos i thank everybody that's donated so far it really helps to keep the lights on so i can produce more content and also expand the channel thank you for liking commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.